Hey guys, Jack here, and today I'm going to show you probably the most elaborate easter egg that Battlefield 4 has to offer, and it all starts on the new Legacy Operations map, Dragon Valley. On the map at the H Temple flag, there is a small phantom skull on the wall here. Very interesting, if you stick around this area for long enough, the lantern above will start flashing. And yes, you guessed it, this is Morse code. The language is Belarusian, and when you translate it, it says, did you miss me? Good luck. JJJU. JJJU of course being one of the masterminds behind some of the more mysterious and elaborate easter eggs in the BF4 expansions and new maps. Obviously this is a hint, there's something to find here. Take a look at this, if you're on an unranked server, some of the lanterns around the temple will be lit when the round starts. It's usually two or three of them, the rest are not powered. If you restart the round, the lit lanterns will change position every single time into a random position. It's definitely a clue. Now scattered around the map in several very well hidden places are seven tiny interactive buttons and they only appear on unranked servers. Let's take a look at their locations now. The easiest one to find is here at the temple underneath the lip of the bricks. The next one is under the rock here at the E flag next to the power station. Button number 3 is located under the water, close to the waterfall. It's hard to see, but if you get close enough to the wall, you'll spot it. Moving on, there's a button under the pier here, close to the G flag. You have to prone to go in and turn around to find it. Another one here at the back left building of the C flag behind the furnace. Very sneaky. The penultimate button is at the B flag on the second level of the pagoda. Go prone here and crawl up to the edge to find it. And finally, the seventh button, which is definitely the hardest to find, is located inside a tree you have to destroy between the A and B flags. Take a chopper up the hill and jump out, slide down, blow up the tree with some C4 and you'll find the button hidden inside the stump of the tree. It was noted that pressing these buttons has an effect on the lanterns that are back at the temple. Each button will change the current state of a number of lanterns to either on or off. But get this, which lanterns the button affects changes each time the map is restarted, as do the original lit lanterns, so every solution to the problem is different, there is no definitive global answer here. But what are we meant to be doing here? Obviously, we've got to light all 20 lanterns and see what happens. So how do we go about doing this then? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than just pressing all of the buttons and it takes some time, some drawings and coordination. It's a logic puzzle, you have to flick the right switches to ensure that you light the right lanterns without taking any of them away. The method we used was to draw down each lantern as they are, number them and mark down which ones are already lit when the game starts. It started on paper like this, but then we moved to something a lot more professional. So in this case we had three lanterns that were lit, number 10, number 11 and number 20. That is the default state of the lanterns and you need to know that. The next step is to go to one of the seven buttons, turn it on and mark down which lanterns it's had an effect on. Writing this down and colour coding it is definitely recommended and will make things much easier for you. So in this case, the first button we went to was the tree and that had an effect on lantern 7, 9, 12 and 18. So we put a black dot in there to signify that. Now make sure that before you move on to a different button, use the same button again and turn it off. This is very important because you need the default state to test exactly what each button does. Next we headed to the pier button, that's colour coded in light blue. When you turn it on it has an effect on lanterns 1, 2, 9, 12 and 14 so we mark a blue dot there to record that. Turn it off and move on to the next button and so on and so forth. Eventually if you did it correctly when you press the seventh button you'll have at least one dot in every single lantern meaning that it's possible to light them all with the correct buttons activated. You'll also notice that the last button you press, it doesn't matter which one it is, will keep any lanterns that only have one dot in them permanently activated. This is not a bug and you'll need to press all of the seven buttons to complete the puzzle. In this case, the last button we pressed was the shrine marker in grey. It affected buttons 5, 6, 8, 10, 11, 13 and 19. Notice how buttons 6 and 19 only have one button controlling them, therefore they'll stay permanently lit. Now it's just a case of figuring out which buttons to turn on and which ones to leave off by using the colour code. It will take some trial and error before you get it right. The solution to this particular sequence was to turn pier, rock and temple on. That left us with 20 of the lights in the on state and if you do it correctly, as you press the final button, you'll hear a double beep confirmation. 
Remember, each server and button is different, so the solution here will not work for you and you'll have to go through the motions of what I just described to figure it out. So now what happens? End of the Easter egg, right? Big payoff, a dragon appears in the sky. Nope, nothing apart from this. If you go back to where the skull is on the wall and look behind the outer pillar, you'll find this, a keypad. If you press any button on the keypad, it will make the lantern next to it start flashing with Morse code again. This is a different message and it's almost four minutes long. What does it say? Well, it says something very cool and mysterious. When night falls over the old factory, a secret lurks in the openness of the North Woods. Multiply the letters of the longest word and the one after it to form the code. Okay, so that's a clue. When night falls over the old factory. What map is that in BF4? Obviously, that's the nighttime version of Zavod, the graveyard shift. It's the only nighttime map in BF4 and there's an old factory with woods to the north. So over to graveyard shift then, the north woods. It's very dark and very foggy, hard to see. But if you search long enough, you'll find a large rock on the edge of the map at almost direct north. Move closer and crouch into the rock and you'll hear this. What the hell is that? Sounds like some sort of mutant toad perhaps, but if you listen carefully, it sounds like slowed down spoken word. So let's record the audio and drag it into Sony Vegas, increase the speed, lock it to pitch and now listen. Yes, I've got little birdie legs. If you're a Battlefield fan, you'll know exactly what this is. It's the character Neebs from Battlefield Friends singing one of his greatest hits. I got little birdie legs, birdie legs, little birdie legs. I got little birdie legs. Hey, what are you doing? Birdie legs. Taking the bass, man. Very interesting. Now then, remember what the clue said. Multiply the letters of the longest word and the one after it to form the code. The longest word is little and the one after that is birdie. So is it 6 multiplied by 5? Well, that would give us 30. That can't be the code, surely. How about this instead? If we take each letter from little birdie and give it its numerical value in the alphabet, we get this. 12, 9, 20, 20, 12, 5 and 2, 9, 18, 4, 25. Let's multiply the letters and see what we get. 12 by 9 by 20 and so on and so forth. The answer to that is 83980800000 and that is the correct code. So now let's go back to Dragon Valley and input this into the keypad. What do we get? Well, you'll get the double beep to confirm it's correct and then the Morse code lantern begins to flash again. This time quicker. It's much harder to read but it's still possible. It says, to claim your prize, now join a ranked Conquest large game. Stand at the west side of the shaft of the northwestern water tower for two minutes. Then use this individual code there, 13192964. Interesting, the word individual is very important too and I'll explain why soon. So let's join a ranked Conquest large game on Dragon Valley and head over to the water tower. See what's going on there. Hmm nothing there it seems. Well, let's wait around for two minutes like it said on the western side in this exact spot and see what happens. Would you look at that, it's one of our old friends, the tiny button. Interact with it and another keypad will appear on the water tower in front of you. It's time to input the code we got from the last Morse code message, 13192-9664. Neebs again from Battlefield Friends screaming promoted for you. Well done soldier, but nothing seemed to happen. That's weird. So what was it? Well, if you wait for the round to end and then go to your equipment and customization menu, click on your character camo, scroll down to the bottom and there it is. The Dice LA camo is now yours to own. This is a very unique camo that only DICE LA employees have had access to until now and it's actually one of the most standout camos in the game. Pretty cool. Equip your camo and be the easter egg hunter you were always meant to be. Congratulations. Now remember those words from earlier, individual code. 
Yes, everyone has a unique code for the final keypad. And that means if you want to unlock this special camo, you have to go through the whole process to do it. Because whichever player enters the access code 83980800000 in the first keypad on Dragon Valley by the Lantern will get a unique code specifically for them and it will only work for them. If someone else enters that code into the Water Tower keypad, it's going to be incorrect and play a negative beep. So if you want to code for yourself, you'll have to go through the whole process, record the Morse code message, decipher it and wait till the end to get the numbers. That is pretty tough. It's a long process, but you will get a very unique reward out of it at the end. So there we have it. This Easter egg is definitely a journey and most likely the pièce de résistance of Battlefield 4. In a game full of complicated, wonderful and clever Easter eggs, this one easily takes the cake. A big thanks to JJJU at DICE for putting this all together, Shadow6, Hattiwassi and Hadoukens who searched with me and also everyone in the BF community who joined in with the hunt. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments below if you managed to pick up your special camo yet and I'll see you in the next one.